I mean, my clientele probably adds up to about two billion, but you, you never know. There's no income tax, so you're going out of its tax. We're doing a documentary for young people about what it's like in Monaco. Fake people only. Sorry, do you have to... Trust people from Monaco. I've never seen so many insane cars in such a small place. 70,000 a year just to keep the boat in the slip. How much is the fraud? 850. 850,000. So we were just detained by the police. All the footage was almost deleted. In, in Monaco, it's probably the This is Monaco. One in three people here are millionaires. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking to locals about how did they get so rich and what it's like to live here. We're doing a documentary about what it's like to live in Monaco. You have a great look. We have a documentary for YouTube. We have a, a popular. Okay. How's it to live here? How is it to live? Yes, sir. I would rather not see a documentary. Okay. Thank you, sir. He rejected me in the British accent. He's like, sir, f you, good friend. We're doing a documentary for young people about what it's like in Monaco. Fake people only. Sorry, don't do you have to trust people from Monaco. Don't trust the people of Monaco. Now there's conspiracy. We're gonna find out. People were keeping pretty tight-lipped about what goes on here in Monaco, and I was starting to get a lot more suspicious. But for now, I enlisted my wild card, Jeremy, the producer of the channel who also happens to speak French to see if he could use his va va voom to find out the juicy secrets of the rich living in Monaco. What, what did you do before you retired? What were you doing? What was your profession Oh, wow, he was the Monaco ambassador in Vatican. Wow. 16 years. Wow. Jeremy's French charm and presence seemed to be working. The locals started to warm up to us. On our way to go and talk to more locals, we were taken aback by how many luxury cars were just casually driving on the road. What do you do for a living? Cool car. Cool car. Can't hurt. Lambo. Another Bentley. This is a Bugatti Veyron 1.4 million. I've never seen so many insane cars in such a small place. It's two and a half kilometers. It's basically just a few miles. Even though there were supercars at every corner I turned, I wanted to see some of the more exclusive cars Monaco had to offer. What kind of car is it? It's a Dallara Stradale. It's a very particular version. That's why it's so expensive. Is it most people that live in Monaco that buy these or is it like yes, both? Yes, yes. How much is the Ferrari? 850. 850,000. Yes, yes, it's um, brand new and uh, it's soft market. While we were in the dealership checking out these cool cars, we also ran into someone who was looking at potentially buying that $850,000 Ferrari. So we asked him a few questions. What, what do you do in Monaco? What do you do for work? Real estate. How much is it for real estate if I wanted to buy a place to become a resident here? Uh, on the beach, 100,000. Yeah. Wow. wow. One, one meter. And then what's it like to own a Ferrari? I've never owned a Ferrari. What, what's it like? You said you have one. Yeah. What's that like? I have a Tributo, a few Tributo. Okay. And uh, the old car, uh, Daytona. So it's a dream to have a Ferrari. And is it as good as the dream? Yeah. If it is also your dream to own a Ferrari or be your own boss, the best way possible to do that is to start your own business. Now, if you're someone that's tried starting a business but it hasn't worked for you, we have good news for you. We put together an exact course that shows the process I've used to start multiple seven and eight figure businesses, AppSumo.com being one of them, as well as the things I've learned being number 30 at Facebook and number four at Mint.com. For a limited time, we've opened the course back up for only 10 bucks, yes, because we want as many people as possible to get started on their entrepreneurial journey. To get started, head over to monthly one k.com to sign up and get going. After checking out the cars, I just had to find out what the people of Monaco were doing differently to afford these crazy cars and a life of luxury. Do you live in Monaco? Yes. We're, we're doing a, a documentary about what it's like to live here. And you have, you have great style, so I wanted to, yeah. Monaco attracts clearly rich people because it is a tax holiday. There's no income tax, there's no inheritance tax. So to transfer wealth to a new generation is quite helpful. Yeah. Just here to work. Um, so it's a bit of a different world. What kind of work? So I'm, I'm a bar manager. You're a bar manager. Do you yeah. deal with a lot of like these rich clientele of people of course, that? Of every day. I mean, my clientele probably adds up to about two billion, but you'd, you'd never know. Really? You'd never know at all. My idea at first was to uh, come over here and I, I want to buy my own bar, but I, don't, I haven't got my foot in it. So I was trying to find a silent investor working working in Monaco. That's a smart move. So you came out here to find someone with the money. Yeah, well, that's where it is. <laughs> so, yeah. What's it like to live here in Monaco? Well, huh, what kind of stuff do you do? Because it's so it's amazing to be here. Yeah, it's amazing. I am actually secretary general to an association where the prince is the president. So I I do some uh, yes, I 
like support the government, let's say. Of Monaco. Yes. How did you get that job? That's crazy. Uh, many years ago. It's like 11 years that I'm living here. So okay. first I was just a member of this association and then I, I stepped up and yeah. I organize events for them. Would you recommend people getting into events as a business, as a career, or like what what careers or things would you would you recommend yeah, for them? Yeah, because events it's a catch-all category. You have uh, the artistic side, okay, you have sure. the marketing, you have the organization. Of course, you have the, the financial aspect. Yeah. So, and it's fun, and you work on projects, and you don't get bored because every time is different. And what kind of stuff do you do in Monaco? I was starting to work in these beautiful places. It was one of the fine dining best fine dining restaurant in the world. This place? Yes, this one. It's called the Louis Cans with the chef Carla and In 1992, the best restaurant in the world from the Crème de la Crème, Herald Tribune, all the guys. Wow. And it was his, uh, Alain Ducasse is the famous chef. Yeah, I've heard of him. Now he's the manager. All the um, many restaurants around the world, a few, the best restaurant here in uh, Esbam in Monaco. Wow. Do you, you run restaurants? I'm working in the hospitality. How is that? How does that work? Working in Monaco is a beautiful. It's a many, of course, rich people that come here, but they are very nice people because they want to enjoy, they want to relax, they want to be safe, they want to enjoy life like the normal people. Yeah. So it's the right place to be. On our way to talk to more people, I was blown away by the cost of the real estate here in Monaco. Check out some of these house prices. 4.3 million for a two bedroom apartment. 15 million for five bedrooms. So with all this wealth floating around, I was curious to find out what people did for fun here. What brought you here? Work. I work for a tax consultants, international tax consultants. What do people do for fun in Monaco? Like, what do you like doing for, for fun? For fun. There's the Yacht Club, which is uh, great, but you need to be a member. Is it? It's membership. like down. Yeah, uh, that one. How much is the membership? It has the, uh, well, I, I think around uh, 30,000 uh, euros. You need to be introduced by a member, uh, so it's not... Uh, Money is not enough. Yachts do sound like fun. We went to see if we could speak to a yacht broker and get a mini tour of his million dollar yacht. So you said this is two and a half million right now or how much is it selling for? All right, so two and a half million, but it's four million brand new. How much is harboring costs here? 70K a year. Jeremy, he was saying it's 70,000 a year just to keep the boat in the slip. Uh, to charter for a week, how much is this one? This will go for 7,000 a day. Let's stay. So what, what type of uh, clientele do you mostly sell these to? One of these, the owners of this particular, not this boat, but the same model, is a uh, Formula One driver. So there are some young buyers out there. What's the standard commission for like selling a boat? 25%. So it's kind of like real estate, like 6% or something yeah. like that. After spending more time on the yacht, we try to get a few more interviews from the locals in Monaco. It seemed to be going well. What, what advice do you have for your kids or for people starting in their careers? Work very hard. Really uh, focus and uh, determination. Passion. Yeah. Passion, you don't do too much. But then we were stopped by a guard who told us it was forbidden to film in Monaco and called the police on us. We had to stop filming because we were detained. But I left my mic on for our own safety and so that you could hear what they said when they approached us. We have to do this and this, okay? Because in, in, in Monaco, it's forbidden. All right, so we were just detained by the police. All the footage was almost deleted. They swarmed us for filming this kind of video, talking to people about what it's like to be here. How do you make a lot of money? Jeremy speaks French. They were not aware of that. Jeremy, what were they saying and like what actually went down? In Monaco, they have their own rules, right? And so they kept they kept saying that you're not allowed to film people, right? And I think I think their fear is that we misrepresent the country. He was pushing. He was like, oh, we have to delete all their footage and stuff. Like, bring, let's bring them to the police office, like scare them a little bit. Is that what he said? Yeah, pretty much. He said, let's take them to the office to scare yeah. them? No, he was like, let's take him to the office. And then the younger guy was like, we can't really do that, right? And he was like, let's, let's go. Let's, and he was like pushing it. They asked for IDs. They asked for our parents' names, which is kind of strange. Uh, and I guess you need authorization to even film in public here in Monaco. But definitely a first and kind of like intimidating and, and scary to think like the flights, the hotel, all the day, the planning, and then everything would have just been deleted. So I'm, I am grateful that uh, they didn't delete everything that we did today. If you like this video, check out this video right up here. We talk to yacht owners about how they got rich, what they do for a living, and advice for people like you and me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uncle Noah loves you, and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.